What's up everyone and welcome to a new tutorial. Today we're going to be jumping into Premiere Pro and checking out an effect called the corner pen. It allows you to manipulate the edges of your videos, but I'm going to use it in a way that I don't think you have seen before. And I'm also going to show you a way to do a unique slide transition by using the corner pen effect. It's pretty powerful, so let's just jump into it. But first, click that like button and let me know you think down in the comments below because it takes me a while to make these videos and I really appreciate your guys' feedbacks feedback. Also, I got a monitor that I added up here. I'll be doing a video on that soon. I also want to let you know that I have merch coming soon. I just designed this today and I have some samples coming in. So as soon as I get those, I'll be sure to let you know if you want to pick some of these up. Also, I was actually playing around with this effect and I wanted to create this effect, which I thought was really cool, but I ran into issues with the uh, corner pin and it really didn't like the edges and it kind of glitched out when you added another one in here and it didn't look the way I wanted it to, but just know that I'm gonna be working on this to see if I can create effect like this in the future. All right, let's get started with a simple basics of the corner pin so you can understand what it does and honestly what it looks like. So what you need to do is go to the effects tab and type in corner. And then there's gonna be something called corner pin under video effects distort. Click and drag that onto your clip. As soon as you do that, you'll see that if you select the corner pin effect in the effects controls, you'll notice that you get these edges right here and their little circles. If you don't see those, you can change your zoom level and you'll see these circles right here. Basically, you can click and drag these circles right here and you'll instantly notice that it changes your clip around. Now change your resolution to like a half or a quarter because this is definitely going to take some power out of your computer. I'm going to create a simple slide transition in between these two clips. So what you want to do is find a point where you want to start your slide. So I'm going to go right here and what you need to decide is which direction are you sliding. In the beginning I slid to the right so let's slide from this side to the left. The upper right corner pin is noted by the upper right corner pin down here. So if you drag the X value to the left that will drag to the left. And if you drag the Y value up, that will drag it down since X goes positive this way and Y goes positive this way. Toggle a keyframe on the upper right and the lower right because I know that I want to use these two keyframes if I'm gonna slide to the left. And I'm gonna hold Shift and the right arrow key, let's say four times, one, two, three, four. Now you can click and drag these however you want to the left to create your effect, but I like using actual numbers. So my sequence is 3840 by 2160. So if I drag my X all the way to zero, that will drag that top keyframe all the way to the left. And then I'm also going to change my lower right all the way to zero as well, because that will change that value to the left. Now, if you quickly play this back, you'll instantly see that it kind of looks like that. And it doesn't really look that good. So what you want to do is highlight both of your starting keyframes, right click and go to temporal interpolation, go to ease out, highlight both your next keyframes, temporal interpolation, and go to ease in. If you click these down arrows, you can see that we have created a speed graph or like a Bezier curve. So it's a little bit smoother, but what I like to do on these transitions is actually click on your keyframe and then drag your first keyframe to the right and also drag that first keyframe of the lower right all the way to the right. So that will start slow and then really fast. But I want this to actually kind of blend into it. Like I want the top to go first and then the bottom to come after. Drag your lower right or your upper right if you want to out a little bit. It will start to pull into that top one first and then the bottom one will snap there. But as you can see, sometimes it gets a little glitchy where it's these lines and all of a sudden it's back to the normal image and these were the issues I was running into when I was dealing with this. So make sure to play around with this to get the look that you want but at the same time not losing the actual transition. So I like the look of that right there and all you need to do is go to the start of these keyframes and drag the next clip over that clip that you are trying to transition into. And again, go to the effects tab, drag on the corner pin effect onto that video layer and since we are transitioning from the right 
to the left, we need to pull the upper left corner pin and the lower left corner pin all the way to the right. So if I change this keyframe X value on the upper left to 3840, that should pop that all the way to the right. And then if I change the lower left X value to 3840, that should pop it all the way to the right as well. If you're working on a 1920 by 1080 timeline, your numbers will be different, but just use it for your sequence settings. So I'm going to toggle a keyframe on the lower left and the upper left. And what I'm going to do is actually click on the bottom video layer. And I'm going to hit this right arrow to jump to that next keyframe because I know that's where the upper right is going to match. So what I'm going to do is go back to my top video layer and I'm going to change this X value all the way to the left, which is zero so that it jumps right in there. And then I'm gonna go back down to that bottom keyframe, hit this right arrow on the lower right keyframe this time, go back to the top, and then I'm going to also change this all the way to the left, and that would be changing the X value to zero. And what you need to do now is highlight both of those starting keyframes, right click temporal interpolation, ease out, highlight both those next keyframes, temporal interpolation, ease in, because we want to ease out of that first one and ease into these ones. Click the down arrow and let's manipulate this speed graph. Click on the first keyframe, drag this all the way to the right, Click on your next keyframe and also drag that all the way to the right. So now if you play this back slowly, you'll see that it starts to pull in this slide transition and then it quickly and easily transitions into that clip. So it looks pretty cool. It's not always perfect, but honestly it happens so fast that I think it looks great. So now let's create this effect that I had in the beginning example which was kind of like the cube effect. And fair warning, it gets pretty beefy from here on out. You're going to go to the effects tab and drag on the corner pin effect. And once you do that, we're going to go to the beginning of our clip and toggle a keyframe on all of our corner pins. And then I'm going to hold the shift key and go right, let's say eight times this time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That should jump me about 40 frames in the right direction. And what I'm going to do now is manipulate these keyframes. So I want to manipulate them so that it shrinks down my image. but I want it to be standard across the board so it doesn't look like it's lopsided or anything because this is where it's going to be important. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to right click down here in the project area and click the new item button and create a color mat. Now you can pick any resolution you want. So let's do 1920 by 1080 and click OK. And then pick a color that's really bright so you can see that and click OK. As soon as you drag that over your clip, you have a box that you can kind of get a starting idea with. If we click back on our clip right here, now we can click on corner pin and start dragging these points to the edges of this color mat. Now this isn't gonna be perfect, but this will give you an idea of where to start and drag the last one down as well and drag that color mat beneath your image. As you can see, it's not a perfect match, but what you can do is start to manually adjust your corner pin. So click and drag your upper left till it matches, and click and drag your upper right until it gets to that corner, and you can just manipulate this all around. This is a quick and easy way to eyeball it to make sure you have a perfect square. And now if you look at these keyframes, look how close all of them are. So what I'm gonna do is actually pick a number and actually round up to them. So that one I'm gonna round to 540. This one I'm gonna do 2880. This one I'm gonna go also 540. This one I'm gonna do 960. And this one I'm gonna do 1620. And this one I'm gonna do 2880. And this one I'm gonna do 1620 as well. So now we have these set keyframes, and if we play this back, you can see that it goes like this and all the way up to there. Not too exciting. The fun fact is now we can delete that color mat and we can start to work with just this video layer. Highlight all your first keyframes, right click, go to temporal interpolation, ease out, right click on all your last keyframes and temporal interpolation and go to ease in. Let's click the down arrow on all of these keyframes and adjust the speed graph by dragging these to the right. Just click on the keyframe and drag that first one all the way to the right. So now if we play this back, it looks like this. It's nice and smooth and it happens pretty gracefully. So we have to create the actual effect now. All you're gonna do 
is hold Alt or Option on a Mac and click and drag that up and that will duplicate that video layer. Keep these keyframes at the end because we need to save the actual data we have on them so we don't have to redo the color map process. But I'm gonna highlight all of my first keyframes and delete those. And what I'm going to do is actually start to think if I want an image to be flipped on the top, this has to come up. So I theoretically have to pull the bottom portion up into the top corners, just like so. So as you see, that image is now flipped. But what? how do you manipulate this in the effects controls area? So I just pulled the lower left. So what I'm gonna do is look at the keyframe over here and I want it to be at zero, zero. So I'm gonna change this keyframe to zero, zero and that will go pull it to that left corner. And also I pulled the lower right and I want that to be 3840 by zero. So I'm gonna go to the lower right and make sure it's 3840 by zero. So now you think we'd be done with just the top. Well, we're not. We also have to add that keyframe in the beginning portion so that it doesn't show right away. So what I want to do is go all the way to the beginning and now we need to manipulate this portion and this portion so it goes up. So if you click on the corner pin, you can click on one of these and drag it around and then see which keyframe is actually being manipulated in case you are lost because sometimes it's hard to think about this. So I'm going to pull that all the way up there to the left and I'm going to pull this one all the way to the right as well. I know that my upper left needs to be at zero, zero, and my upper right needs to be at the same 3840 by zero. So now if we play this back, we did one full thing just like that, but it looks weird. Why does it look weird? Well, this is because now we have to manipulate these keyframes. So now click on your keyframe that you created and pull it all the way to the right and click on your next keyframe and also pull that one all the way to the right as well. Now we need to recreate that effect on all of the sides. So let's start working on this left hand side. You don't want to copy your video layer that you're working on. You want to copy your very first video layer up because we're going to pull the keyframes from there since that is the easiest way to do this. So I'm going to delete all of my first keyframes and then I'm going to start adjusting this. If I click on my corner pin, I know that I need to pull the right hand portion to the top and this lower right hand portion down to the bottom and that will flip my image. Just remember you're always flipping it over. And now what did that manipulate? Well, we pulled the lower right. So let's look at our lower, lower right. We're close to zero, so let's change that to zero. And then we also need to change this to 2160. And then we also pulled from the upper right. So let's change that upper right to zero and then zero as well since we're putting it up to there. Now all you have to do is go back to the very beginning and adjust these keyframes right here. So we're gonna click and drag this all the way up there to the upper left and then drag this one all the way down to the lower left and let's manipulate those keyframes. So again, it's pretty easy once you get the hang of it because you just gotta manipulate those keyframes to make them match. So that one's zero and then this one is gonna be 2160. And also highlight both your starting keyframes, right click, go to ease out and then drag those to the right just like so, and then now we have the next portion of this effect. I'm gonna quickly do the next two. So hold Alt Option, click and drag that to copy it, and then let's delete all of our first keyframes, go to our ending keyframes, and then manipulate this corner pin. So click on your corner pin, drag this one all the way down here, drag this one all the way down here, and then what I need to do is change the upper left, since we pulled that from upper left, to zero, and then 2160 to get that all the way down in this bottom corner. And then I also need to change the upper right, since I pulled that down here, to 3840 by 2160. And then also let's go to the very beginning and manipulate these keyframes, pull that like there, pull this one right here, and let's manipulate those keyframes. So this one's gonna be 3840 by 2160. And then this one is going to be zero by 2160. Highlight both those, right click, temporal interpolation, ease out, drag to the right, drag to the right. And you play that back, we have the next one in this effect. Now on the last one, hold Alt or Option on Mac, click and drag that video layer up, highlight all those first keyframes, delete them, go click the arrow to jump to this keyframe, and let's manipulate this corner pin. So we're gonna drag this one all the way to the right, and then this one all the way up here as well. So now I know that this one needs to be 3840 by zero, since that is the upper left, and now we need to manipulate the lower left, since we drag that all the way down here. So let's make this one 3840 by 2160. 
So yeah, this is what I'm talking about where sometimes you'll run into bugs. For example, when I go to 2160 exactly, it kind of just disappears and it doesn't show me that video at all. It's kind of a bug with this, so you'll have to play around with that. So we might not be able to make this one 2160, so let's just make it 2161 and it should pop up. So let's go to the very beginning and adjust these keyframes. And I'm gonna click and drag this one up to the top, click and drag that one down there. And what I'm gonna do is make this 3840 and then this one 3840 as well by zero and then this one by 2160. Click and drag those keyframes all over the beginning, right click, temporal interpolation, ease out, drag that to the right, click on this bottom one, drag that to the right. So now you have your entire effect and it looks like this. That's the basics of this effect. It's pretty complex to make, but once you understand the basic principles, you can easily do some of the more advanced features. Now, in order to create that video that pops in, all I did was scale it to this size and then I zoomed in on it to make it come into the image like so. And I also added a little invert. Well, hopefully you enjoyed. It was pretty complex. My brain hurts. I want to go to bed, but click that like button. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And if you're new, consider subscribing because I'm going to be making some more stuff in the future. And also, if you guys want more complex tutorials like this or anything, just let me know and I'll try to do it because I like pushing Premiere Pro to its limit. And I think we did that in today's video.